it is a privilege to uh, to be here. And uh, later on after the service, we'll be taking the vote again for your uh, senior pastor. We trust that you have prayed. But we're going to put that aside for just a little while if we can, okay? Um, I know that that's been on your minds. I know that you've been thinking about it, praying about it. But I just want to push that to the side for just a little bit. And uh, we'll take a break after we preach and have a time of prayer. But uh, let's just focus on the Word just for the next little bit. Amen. Amen. Would you agree with me that we can do that? Amen. And just uh, we're going to worship together as we already have this morning. But I want to ask you to worship with the Word and help us to preach this morning. Psalm 97. Psalm 97. Amen. Amen. It is. Now, now we're cooking with grease, aren't we? <laughs> Amen. Now y'all really going to hear me. It is a privilege to be here. Um, <clears throat> the Lord has allowed us to be here several times. Some of you may not know us. Um, I'm seeing some unfamiliar faces here. Uh, many familiar faces, but if you don't know us, we're absolutely nobody. We're just a simple servant of the Lord, and we are looking forward to uh, delivering what God has laid on our heart to you this morning. But um, again, being here in the house of the Lord at, at the uh, church here, we just thank you. We um, appreciate the opportunity. It's a blessing. I enjoy coming to be with you, and um, I'm glad we could be here today. Psalm 97, the Bible says, The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are around about Him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of His throne. A fire goeth before Him and burneth up His enemies round about. His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord, the whole earth, the heavens declare His righteousness, and all the people see His glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship Him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth, Thou art exalted far above all gods. Ye, ye that love the Lord hate evil. He persevereth the souls of His saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is, is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Here's what verse 12 says. And I want you to do this today. Rejoice in the Lord Ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. I want to preach to you this morning on when they forget who He is. When they forget who He is. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> we are dealing with unusual and unique times. Not only because of the pandemic... But it seems that there has been a transition from light to darkness. <clears throat> and that there are people that love darkness more than they do light. In the fact of all of that, they have forgotten the, real, the, the reality of who God is. There are more and more people today denying who God is. They're denying the reality that there even is a God. But even those that would, would have a semblance of God in their life, they're now saying that He's lesser than who He is. Somehow we've come to this place that we've brought Him down to humanity. That He's no longer of God, but He's just another figure in our everyday life. And whenever I look at society today, I see that they have forgotten who God is. They've forgotten the reality that He sits high on His throne. That there's not another God that's greater than He is. Though there are many gods in this world today, they are false gods. Can I tell you that there's only one true and living God in this world? That there's only one true and living God that created this world? 
that it wasn't a culmination of different gods bringing their creativity together that brought this world about. But on, on a certain day, you, many years ago, God said, let there be. And there was. Amen. Many years ago, God stooped down into the dust of the earth and, and He began with His own hands to form man and to His image and into His likeness. And with His breath, He breathed life into humanity. And today we are still alive and thriving today because God has a purpose and a plan for His creation. But it seems that creation has forgotten who God is. They have begun to label him many different things. They have begun to manipulate his qualities and characteristics to suit their own needs in this life. But God is not a God that can be changed or adjusted to who we are. He is God. And he is the one that rules. He is the one that reigns. There is a doubt that is in this world today that we need to address. There is a doubt if God really does exist. There's a doubt that, that many would have if, if there is a God, then why do such things happen to us? If there is a God, then why do such things take place on behalf of good people? See, I can't explain everything this morning. I can't explain why there are bad things that happen to good people. I can't explain why that people would have to go through the things that they do. But I can tell you this, that no matter what you face and no matter what you go through, that God can make good out of it. Amen. That there's something great that can come from it. Uh, sometimes we don't understand, <clears throat> but it never gives us the, the authority to question the legitimacy and the uh, authenticity of God. It never gives us the right to look up and say that there is no God. Because if we do look beyond our circumstances and we do look beyond our fears, then what we see is that there's a God that loves His creation. We see a God that, <clears throat> that created the heavens and the earth in specific forms so that there would always be a constant in life. You know the old saying is that whenever you can't tell the difference between the seasons that, that the Son of Man is going to come. Well, that's a lie. Because the Bible says that there will always be a distinguishing among the seasons. That there will always be a spring. There will always be a summer. There will always be a winter and a fall. Why? Because God doesn't do things for them to be changed and manipulated. Amen. God is always going to have things set in order. And there's always going to be an order to what God does. And can I preach to you this morning and tell you that God has not changed and, and that we're entering into a, a rebirthing season of our land. Why? Because God says that this must take place in order for the beauty and the majesty of His creation to be performed. There has to be a spring before there can ever be a summer of enjoyment. I'm preaching to somebody this morning to tell you that God has not changed and that God still sits firmly upon His throne this morning. Just simply if we were to go out right now, we could look up into the heavens and see the awe-inspiring clouds that drape the skyline. We could see that God has been working overnight and that there is still the beauty of the Carolina blue sky. UNC Tar Heel Carolina blue for you Duke fans that are here. That's <clears throat> how we know that God's a Tar Heel. We just look up into the sky. Amen. I'm just joking. God could really care less. <coughs> but whenever I look up into the sky, I see that there is the, the sight of clouds that drape, drape our, our vision. And I, I see that there are birds that are flying in that same sky. I see that there is, that there is a creation that today before we ever rolled out of the bed was awake and alive and was singing their praises unto a holy God. The birds start out of the morning. For whatever reason, I have a bird that has made its nest right outside of my window. And every morning before the sun begins to come up, that bird lets me know that it's praising God. It'll begin chirping and it'll begin whistling and 
Whatever they do, just waking up with the rest of nature. I've been in the woods some mornings before the daylight ever comes up and you hear the woods coming alive. And you hear it begin to worship and to praise. You'll hear a squirrel bark over here and an owl howl over here saying that there's a transition from the dark to the dark from the darkness to the light. Amen. They begin to worship God. But yet here we are, his creation, the pinnacle of his creation this morning. And it seems like that sometimes we have to pull eye teeth out of a tiger. It would be easier to do that than to get people of God to worship. Can I tell you that when God created the heavens of the earth, he didn't stop with the day and he didn't stop with the night and the waters being parted. He didn't stop with the creation of the animals. But where he stopped is with you and I. Why? Because he wanted you to be the last thing that he created because you were the most important thing to him. You are the only thing that He did not speak into existence. You are the only thing that was formed by His hands. You are the only thing that has His breath in your body this morning. Why? Because you are the pinnacle of creation. Now, listen, I agree that we ought to preserve our earth and we ought to take care of our earth. But I am by no means going to worship earth. I am by no means going to make earth a priority in my life. But earth tells me that there's a God. Whenever I walked in here this morning and I heard people praising God, it tells me that there's somebody that's still connected to the truth. It tells me that there's still people here, right here in this house this morning, that know God and have a personal relationship with Him. Oh, that we can magnify the Lord together this morning. Why? Because He created us to worship Him. We can never forget who we are. We can never forget what God created us to do. God didn't create us to warm a pew. He didn't create us just to occupy a building. But He created us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. He created us to lift Him up this morning. Why? Because the scripture goes on to tell us, not only because of his, his ability to create, but also because he rules in righteousness and in justice. There is not one thing happening in this world today that God will not deal with. Are you hearing me this morning? There is not one thing in this world today that goes against the righteousness of God that he will not deal with in his justice. But here's the amazing thing about our God. is though that there is justice coming for the unrighteousness of our world, God always in the middle deals with mercy because He loves the creation that He made. And it's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That makes me want to rejoice this morning in knowing that God still loves the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish. Judgment is not going to be escaped. <clears throat> we look at the world around us and we lose our hope because we don't see justice being issued at our convenience. And we forget about the merciful God in heaven that gave us His mercy so that we can know Him. Whenever I look at the world today, I see a world that is depraved, that is walking in unrighteousness and darkness. I see a world that is continually, not gradually any longer, but at breakneck speeds falling into deeper and deeper darkness. Some have said that our world is too far gone. That America is beyond return. There are many that would say that there will not be a revival or there will not be an awakening. But I have come today to declare to you that God is a God of mercy. And circumstances don't change who He is. 
The unrighteousness of humanity does not change who he is. He is always going to work in mercy before he deals in judgment. He's always going to be reaching. And as long as the Spirit of God is here on this earth, he will continue to draw men and women to the throne room of repentance. He will bring them to that place where they can give their life to Christ. Amen. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your grandchildren. Don't give up on your husband or your wife. Life. God is still able to say why because he's God you see the Bible says in verse 3 that he consumes his enemies with fiery holiness and all who reject and rebel against him let me just pause here a minute and say to you I don't know you that well some of you I know better than others. But others I don't know that well. And can I just say to you that before you meet the judgment of God, would you give an opportunity to meet the mercy of God? <clears throat> if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you can know Him. You can know Him in the power of His resurrection. He can bring you from death to life. The wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You can move and transition from the darkness and live in the light. You can live without hopelessness and live with hope. You can go from those days where you feel that the, you can't make it another step and you'll understand that the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. You'll transition. Amen. The old things will pass away and behold, all things will become new is what the Bible says. If you don't know Jesus this morning, today is your day of mercy. Today is your day that you can experience the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to wait another moment. You don't have to wait another day. God can do the work this morning. Why? Because He loves you. Don't forget that there is a God in heaven that loves you more than He loves the rest of the earth. He loved you so much that He gave His Son for it. He didn't give it His Son for the trees. and He didn't give His Son, uh, amen, for the birds and the, the beasts of the field. Uh, no, He gave His Son for you so that you would know Him in His grace and in His mercy. The Bible says in verses 4 through 6 that he bears witness of himself. The Lord bears witness of his holiness and justice through the forces of nature. Now look at this scripture here with me. Open up your Bibles and let's walk through this just a moment. Whenever we see the scripture talking about these different examples, we look and we can understand that it's the Lord showing His, His self in the forces of nature. When the lightning flashes to illuminate the sky, when all of those loud cracks of thunder begin to shake the very foundations of our homes, it's a reminder of the power of God. It's a reminder that God is still in control. There is a need for those kinds of things because God set nature in order. And whenever we see the lightning flash through the sky, and sometimes it looks so beautiful. Anybody ever thought that? You see it just go through the sky and you're like, wow. I hope it don't hit my TV. But to many, we think... Man, there's a severe storm. We've got to take shelter. We've got to take cover. We've got to hide. We've got to put ourselves in a safe place. <clears throat> in all reality, we ought to raise our hands and say, God, you're still all powerful. You're still in control. We might do it while we're hiding in our safe room of the house. But there should be a rejoicing in the fact that God is still in control. And that God ordained the lightning to flash because there is a purpose, amen, in that. Whenever we continue to look at the scripture, earthquakes. There's none of us would rejoice in what happens in an earthquake. But yet it's God. 
It's God. It's God describing those that tremble upon this earth in fear of Him. When the earth begins to shake, it's the earth fearing and trembling the God of creation. Oh, hear me now. It's not just the fault line that's shifting. It's not just something that uh, because they begin to frack and they begin to drill for oil in different places that it's caused the earth to shift and that's why we get earthquakes. No, it's the earth saying, I fear my Creator. It's a different way to look at it. But it's the truth of Scripture. Because the psalmist said, even the earth begins to shake. It begins to tremble because of the power and the might of God. The volcanic eruptions, the mountains being depicted as melting like wax at His presence. That's the mountain saying God, You are holy. You are righteous. Whenever we look at the fervent heat coming from those, it reminds us that there is a devil's hell that is prepared for those that do not serve the Lord. Can I tell you this morning that the earth itself knows that there is a righteous and a holy God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Tonight, as we go out in the calm of the night, and we look up and we see a moon glaring as a reflection of the sun that's on the other side. It tells us that there is a day and that there is a night just like God said there would be. So my question to you is this. Is have we forgotten the God that we serve? We know that the world has because they continue to live in an unrighteousness. But have we as the believer, have we as the one that's supposed to be holding the line preaching the gospel, telling this unrighteous world that there is a righteous God that loves them. And if they will turn to them, they can escape the judgment. But if they refuse and rebel, they will face the judgment. Have we, the church, forgotten our responsibility to magnify the Lord and to praise Him? If the eruptions of the volcanoes and the shaking of the earth and we find the lightning through the skies can glorify and testify that there's a God, then why we, the creation, the pinnacle of His creation, why can we not rejoice Him and tell this world that there is a holy God? I'm asking you this morning, why can't we lift our hands when we don't feel like it? Why can't we in the times of our dark seasons rejoice in the Lord always? And again, I say rejoice. Why is it that whenever the bank account is low and there's needs to be met that we can't just continue to praise God the one who promised that he would supply all of our need according to his riches and glory why is it this morning no matter what you're going through that we just can't break out in a praise and magnify the Lord God is seated on his throne this morning this pandemic has not shifted him the crisis in your life has not changed the way that he deals amen and God is there this morning. And the Bible says that if we'll call on Him in the name of Jesus, the advocate between God and man, that He will hear and answer our prayers this morning. We can rejoice this morning and know that God is still God. Come on, rejoice in Him this morning. I touched on this just a little bit ago. But I really want to help us as the church moving forward. You're getting ready here in just a few moments to vote on your next senior pastor. And I stated this to you, but there's some here that have not heard me say this. The work of the church cannot be done by one man alone. And there is a responsibility of the body of believers... And the psalmist here tells us what that responsibility is. He tells us that we are to warn all those who trust in worthless idols that they will be shamed and that they will be done away with and that they need to turn to God. 
We see folks going down a treacherous path. But are we willing to be that call in their life that tells them to turn around? Come back. Don't do that. Come. Come to the Father and receive Christ. All the Bible says in verse 7, it talks about these paganistic worshipers. Here's the fact of it, is they may worship their idols and their gods now, but eventually they will bow at the feet of Jesus. They need to come home. They need to come back now because God will vindicate righteousness. The Bible tells us that there is a time that will come when people call darkness light and good, evil and evil good. And we're here. It's no longer a prophetic word. We're here. And there's got to be a church that cries out against that and tells the truth. Why? Because God loves them. We need to let them know that God is the Most High God. And we need to tell them that there is a way of repentance. That Jesus died on the cross for their sins. There's one more thing that I want to tell you that the church needs to do. It is a must. Not only is it a must for us to warn the unrighteous, but there is a must for us to encourage the righteous. That's why we need this today. And what 2020 took from us, we need to rebuild as safe as possible. As quickly as possible. Because we need the encouragement of the saints. We need to encourage one another because God protects the believer. And we need to encourage one another because sometimes we can forget ourselves who God is. Come on, somebody. Don't act like the unrighteous this morning. Tell me the truth. Amen. We can forget who God is because everything's hitting us from every side and we don't know which way to turn. We don't know how to handle it. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. And we forget. Thank God for the saints that come by and encourage us and say, you can make it another day. You're going to be all right. It's going to be okay. The church is with you. We're behind you. You're not going to go through death alone. You're not going to go through struggles and chaos by yourself. The church is here with you. We're going to walk with you through it. Oh, thank God that He gave us the church. Thank God that He gave us a body of believers that whenever we're low in our faith, that there would be somebody that could come alongside of us and help us along the way. Aren't you thankful today for the house of God and the fellowship of the saints? Come on, give Him praise. Thank God today that we can walk together by faith. Hallelujah. The, the righteous need to walk together because this is not a journey that we can make alone. God understood that even Himself needed fellowship. So He created humanity. And He walked with them in the cool of the day. Unrighteousness divided humanity from God. He made a way. Provision was made. And so man can come back and live in the holiness and the righteousness of God. Because they've been forgiven of their sins. But that walk and that journey... It's so much better when you have people with you. Aren't you thankful for those times that you can call on somebody and say, Hey, I just need you to pray with me today. And know that somebody is there. We need to encourage the saints. We don't need to be talking doom and gloom. Uh, we know it's there. We know that there's things that are going wrong in our world. But what if the church come together and said, There's hope. And we've got a message of hope that we're going to share with one another, but we're going to share it with the world. What could God do with this church if we all jump in and do our part? Stand with me, would you? Let me ask you the question.
And I'm asking everybody in this house, not just a specific group. But let me ask you, have you forgotten who God is? Have you forgotten that He's the one that can shut the mouth of a lion to protect His children? Have you forgotten that even when you're thrown into the fire that He'll walk there with you? And Isaiah, he said that the flame will not even kindle upon you. The waters will not even overflow you. He said that He would stay with you. Have we forgotten that God is able to supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory? No matter what that need may be, God is able to provide for us. The enemy wants to distract us. The enemy wants us to get focused on things that are not relevant to eternity. And he wants to get us so sidetracked that we forget who God is. But I've come by today to remind you that God is still God. And He's still working. Could we just praise Him like we are His creation this morning? Can we lift our hands and our hearts toward heaven and just magnify Him? And bless Him. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I implore you, come to this altar. Come to this altar and know Him as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to face the judgment of God. You can experience the grace and the mercy of God. You don't have to walk in fear. You can walk in faith. God this morning can help you and strengthen you and bless you. <clears throat> come on, lift your hearts. Lift your hands toward heaven. Magnify the Lord this morning. Give Him thanks for something that He's done for you. Give Him thanks that He's, that he's done something for somebody else. <coughs> Come on and praise Him this morning. Come on and praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to leave you with some scripture here this morning. This altar is open for anybody that wants to pray. And we're going to pray here in just a moment. But I want to leave you with some Scripture. The Bible says, Let not your heart <clears throat> be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Romans 12 and 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22, Abstain from the very appearance of evil. Whenever I look down into Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In Proverbs 8 and 13, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth, do I hate, the Bible says. Here is the difference. God said if you'll follow righteousness, you can have blessing. If you follow unrighteousness, you'll have cursing. God wants to bless you today. Can we just lift our hands and our hearts as we pray one more time? Father, would you move in our hearts? Would you move in our lives? Would you give us a desire for righteousness greater than anything that this world has to offer us? Any pleasure that this world would submit to our, our amusing? God, I'm asking you today, help us, Lord, to love you more than we've ever loved you before. God, we pray that you would touch us, that you would strengthen us, Lord, that you would meet the needs of this congregation this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would help us, oh God, to know who you are in a greater capacity than we've ever known before. We bless you and we magnify you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Could you put your hands together and give God praise this morning? Now I want you to praise Him like you're the pinnacle of His creation. Don't forget who you are.
Brother, I've never met you in my life, but I like you. They said they like you too. That's what we need right there. I admire you. I admire you. I'm just going to say this out of, out of just a thought. You would probably do the same thing in Walmart as you do right here, wouldn't you? Amen. Yeah. I, I can see my brother grabbing his groceries. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What, what a wonderful time to rejoice in the Lord this morning. Amen. Thank you so much for being here in the house of the Lord. If you're a visitor here with us today, um, our church is in transition here, and uh, we're going to vote here in just a few moments on a new senior pastor, and we pray that uh, you have been blessed today. But we want you to come back. If you're a visitor here with us, we want you to come back and be a part of this church. There is a great spirit of worship here. There is a great attitude of servants here. And uh, I just want to encourage you to come back and be a part. And I want to challenge everybody that's here that's a, that's a regular member, a regular attender, a faithful, faithful visitor, whatever you want to classify yourself as. Next week, on Sunday morning, have somebody sit beside you. Call somebody and say, would you just go with me? And would you be in service with me this coming Sunday? The statistics say that I think it's 78% of the people in the world today would go to church if somebody would just invite them. That's pretty high. 78%. They just need an invitation. You don't have to hound them. Uh, my dad was a pastor for many years and he would say this. He would say, the Bible says, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. He said, compelling you, take it as far as you want to without breaking the law. <laughs> but get people in the house of the Lord. Get people here. Amen. This is where, where community of faith happens, is right here. Thank you for being here today. Let's dismiss in prayer. We'll take about a 10-minute break, and then we'll come back together as a, as a uh, church meeting and an assembly. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for every person that was here in your house today. Thank you especially for our visitors that come to be with us. We pray a blessing upon them, that as they go their separate ways, that as we depart this morning, Lord, that you would just protect us and guide us and keep us, that your blessing would be upon us. And that the blessing of heaven, Lord, would rest in our life. And that we would walk in that blessing knowing that we are your children. And Lord, that you are our God. We love you today and we pray, Lord, that you would just continue to make your face shine upon us. Lord, bless us and keep us as we go our separate ways. And we'll give you praise and honor and glory in Christ's name. Amen.